Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving me a chance to inspire you with creating your own software using well-known technologies. If you want to create a mobile application and integrate it with external devices or services, like RFID, IoT, machine learning, and so, you may think that it's challenging. And of course, it can be challenging, but I will show you that today's technology is not a limit anymore. You can do whatever you want. The only thing what, which limits you is your own imagination and your creativity. My name is Szymon Komorowski. I work as a mobile ar ar architect at JIT Team. We are a great IT company. We do a lot of projects for our customers, but we're constantly interested in learning new stuff, creating new um, software for our purposes. We have a group of people doing R&D by creating useful software for ourselves, as I, as I said, and that's why I'm here. I want to share with you our selected projects, which we've been working for, uh, for, for a while, which seemed to be hard to implement, and let's look what I prepared for you. Here is our agenda. We will cover three main areas. First is RFID, second one beacons, and the last one is machine learning. So let's start with the first one. RFID stands for radio frequency identification. It can be used for in, it can be used in small chips for identifying different things. They just send their identifier to RFID antennas. Where can you meet them? One of the or most of the popular applications are here, like supply chain tracking, access management, race timing, or inventory tracking in, in retail. And I would like to focus on this particular uh, RFID application. But how it works? RFID doesn't have a battery, but it has its unique ID. Whenever the antenna tries to read the tag, it gets powered for a while and sends back its ID. We can have many tags and many antennas. We can, and actually that's the whole logic. What you can do with the antenna, with this particular device, you can connect it with your local backend using Ethernet or, uh, or Wi-Fi. Wonderful. We have already, we already have the basics. Let's look at real RFID example we created. We are involved in big RFID project with our customer for, from the clothing industry. This motivated us to start working with different ways of using RFID uh, in retail. And that's why we started Smart Fitting Room Project, where we integrated RFID technologies with our application in a smart way. Our prototype product will be assisting you while you are in the shop. It will give you additional information, providing clothing recommendations, and will improve contact with the customer. And everything is possible thanks to RFID technology. We just put RFID tags into pieces of clothing. Let's see how it works. While taking some pictures of clothing, the application already knows which items you got. You can look at the photos, check for additional information. And after putting, some cloth, after putting on some clothes, you can check if other models or s and sizes are available and ask the salesperson to bring them to you. And that's actually the whole logic, the, the, the main area, uh, the main idea of smart fitting room. What is worth mentioning? This is just a prototype. It hasn't been released yet. We are still working on it by checking other possibilities and testing new functionalities. So we did a research, research on it, trying to check several readers and antennas, and it turned out to be really quite easy. And how you can start working with RFID, if you'd like, as you can see, it's less than $200 to start playing with RFID. If you look at those numbers, it's really obvious that even for the small scale projects, you only need do those two items. You can buy them at any time. They are available at online shops, for example, like Chinese ones. Just get them and start playing with RFID because actually nothing else is needed for you. It's available for everyone, not for the biggest companies only. Uh, everyone can afford it by w and start creating their own solutions. You can select those antennas on the market which already have a special driver for external devices connection. The only issue, issue we had with this particular antenna 
was the fact that we uh, didn't have uh, access to to driver for it, but it wasn't a huge problem for us because one of our developers created a driver within a few days of coding. The part of the source code is shown right here. It works perfectly fine with Android devices, for instance, and the only thing you need to do is to listen to incoming RFID tags, and that was enough for our purposes in terms of smart fitting room. So as you can see, it's not rocket science. There is one thing I like to add regarding RFID. What is funny that is the fact that in Poland we still don't have electronic toll collections on highways. I really hate waiting on highway gates, especially in Gdańsk in summer because queues can be very long. And in other normal countries, thanks to RFID systems, you can just quickly pass the, the gate without stopping a car. As I know, people who are responsible on for highways and infrastructure in Poland, plan to integrate with normal, modern RFID-based systems, and I really can't wait for it, and probably I'm not alone. So, and now you know that it's not super hard to implement such solutions, so we can create similar solution to show them that it's not super hard, and everyone can do a proof of concept of electronic toll collection. So maybe this will motivate some people in Poland to hurry up with to improve drivers' lives. All right, I've shown you a real example of RFID, uh, RFID implementation, this smart fitting room. We spent a lot of time on it by doing analysis, writing a mobile application, trying to bake everything up together, but we didn't even realize that integration with RFID and our application can be so easy. So it's great that we have tremendous opportunities of creating such solutions. RFID has been available for commercial use for many, many years, but I believe that it still has undiscovered possibilities. A lot of various implementations are still possible. So I really encourage you to start discovering this, this technology. If you are interested how it works in detail, you can contact me after my talk. At JIT, we have a lot of experts uh, in this industry who are willing to share their knowledge with you. So I believe you liked the RFID technology. Uh, you've seen the example how we did that, and now you can create something great with RFID as well. All right, let's move to the second part of the presentation, beacons. We are done with RFID. Let's move on to, to beacons. Beacons are small devices which send some messages all the time. You may think that they are similar to RFID, and of course can be similar, but everything is different using different type of radio, different type of identification, and can be used to different type of, or to totally different purposes. So in short, same, same, but still different. I will clarify the differences in detail later on, but first let me show you an example of one of our fun projects. I like to tell you a short story. Are you ready? Ah, me too. I invite you to our office. This is the endless corridor. Unsurprisingly, my room is at the very end of this corridor. And as you know, we are an IT company. We love spending our money on the best sandwiches and salads. But sometimes we can't do it. You may ask why. The sandwich guy visits us every day, but at a different time. And sometimes we, I didn't even know that he already visited the office and I wasn't alone. A lot of my colleagues were angry because they couldn't spend their hard-earned money on sandwiches. So they were angry but because they were hungry. But yeah, we, they couldn't, uh, yeah. So we wanted to solve this problem, and that's why GTIT was born, to make people not angry and hungry, but happy and full. The aim of this application was to let Everyone know that the sandwich guy arrived. Please look at our application, which is the result of just a couple hours of coding. A sandwich guy visits the office, he just arrived, he puts his phone to a beacon, and now our bright people received a notification. Both on desktop, as you can see, and on a mobile device. And everyone got a notification, and they are going to buy and eat their sandwiches 
Look how happy they are. Wonderful, so GT saved another day. The application is very simple, as you've seen. You may wonder why we needed a beacon here. Because in this solution, the sandwich guy needs to do almost nothing. He just needs to enter a corridor, and everyone knows he is there. We would like to install more beacons in whole office park for other companies, and then app will know automatically which company's employees should be notified. Did you like it? I did. Yeah. OK, let's look how, let's look how exactly beacons work. Be basically, beacons are advanced devices which send or which have a lot of stuff in them. They are able to communicate with a smartphone directly. You don't need to have special antenna. The only thing you need is just a beacon-enabled mobile application installed on your smartphone. As you, as you remember from the previous section, RFID tags waiting for the antenna, and antenna needs to send a radio signal to them to get a response with their identifier. In contrast to RFID, beacons are able to send their signal on, the, on their own. You can divide beacons into two main parts. Proximity beacons, as you see on this slide, which can be simply described as a single beacon, uh, which is able to, to broadcast a message to each smartphone which is in the beacon's range. Everything else is done by Bluetooth Low Energy. And the second type, location beacons. Here, beacons can contact each other to create a virtual map. This approach can be used in indoor location, for instance. OK, so to sum up, we have actively transmitting beacons, which send their signal. You can use them in proximity scenario and location scenario. It's super easy to start integrating them with your mobile application, thanks to SDKs provided by the manufacturers. And how you can start? Just buy a few beacons for less than $100. You don't need a special antenna for it. Everything else is integrated with your mobile phone. You can buy at least two types of beacons, as I said, proximity and location, and mix them up. Jitit, the example I've shown you a while ago, what is the example of proximity beacons. And now let's look at location beacons example. As you work closely with academic world, providing lectures, workshops, and internships, we wanted to check if we are able to cooperate with younger high school students. We prepared a half year program to them dedicated to, to the students. And during first meetings, the students came up with an app idea. They wanted to create a school navigator. So the app allows you to find a proper room in the building, which can be frustrating for their parents during their first visit in school. So the purpose of this application was very simple, not to create the most useful application in the world, but to show them how professional work looks like. And then we wanted them to create fully functional application integrated with location beacons. So we started putting a few beacons in the building, and students tried to integrate them with their mobile app. Look what they did. A guy opens the app and selects a room he wants to go to and follows the application suggestions to reach a specific room. And actually, that's it. That's the whole application. So the project ended with a huge success. Uh, the apps uh, are available in uh, Google Play and App Store. Full source code is available on GitHub. You can look at it later. So from our perspective, we learned how to teach high school students. From their perspective, they learned how to create mobile apps in Xamarin, in this case, with Beacons integration. So we really had a lot of fun participating in this project. All right, to sum up, Beacons allow you to work with two scenarios, proximity and location. They are easily available. You can buy them for affordable price. They work with every modern smartphone. So I really encourage you to start them to, to start to try them on your own. You can create a fun app use, which can be used in your home or at the workplace. I think you already have in mind more cases where beacons can help in your, in your life. So we discussed two out of three sections. Let's go to the final one. 
machine learning. Everyone loves machine learning, as you see. Now, I'd like to focus on the specific part of machine learning, which is facial recognition. But first, let me introduce our next fun project. We call it Widget. Uh, you want to take a picture, no problem. I can grab a water, so that's okay. Anyone? Uh, okay. Wonderful. So let's go to the next, our fun project. So we al as we already have 300 employees, we wanted to have a corporate social application to know each other better. The web and mobile version is in use by everyone. It has a lot of useful functionalities we use every day at work. What is fantastic, Widget turned out to be a great playground in terms of experimenting with other technological possibilities to, to check w what kind of crazy functionalities we can add. And, and, then, and that's why we use Widget for it. So the m one of them was facial recognition. We wanted to playing with facial recognition, but at that time we didn't have any machine learning specialists available for this particular project. But we didn't give up, we just searched for cloud-based facial recognition service, which already had pre-trained model. So we integrated the service with our mobile application within just a few hours, and you can see how it works. The only what you need to do is to take a picture. And the system will automatically search for the proper person and will display their profile. So my friend's case, it's a good proof that the facial recognition works because this guy shaved specially for this experiment to slightly change his look. And surprisingly, surprisingly, the system recognized him. And look how useful this and fantastic this functionality is. But seriously, the implementation was fast and the results were better than we expected. So this basic example shows you how advanced cloud-based machine learning solutions are and how accessible this technology is. Even if you don't know the details of machine learning, you can still have the benefits of using this technology in your product. As a mobile app developer, you, don't, you, you can create an intelligent app without concentrating on algorithms. You can use, and, and you, you can use those cloud-based services in your product. So for me personally, this is impressive that you can create such solutions in no time. And this feature has been created for fun. But in the meantime, it turned out that facial recognition can be used in one of our projects, which is developed uh, by us for our client, to improve timesheets management in their factories. So when you don't need to meet security rules or manage access for restricted areas, but just you, but you just want to count people or prefill their timesheets, basing on how much time they spend in their factory, facial recognition can be a way to go. So this is not what what one hundred percent perfect solution for sure, but can help in this kind of cases by saving money or time of workers who need to fill old-fashioned paper list. So I believe that you that you have in mind more cases where this kind of services can be used every day. All right, to summarize, we went through all the stuff I prepared for you. Let's summarize everything. Today's technology is not a limit anymore. You can do whatever you want. And using our example, I've shown you how you can do it. You don't need to be an expert on IoT or machine learning. You don't need to know what a semiconductor is or how to train the data model to e recognize someone's face. But the most important question is the, uh, you, you can ask is the why. Why you should do this project and why do you want someone's problem, uh, why do you want to solve someone's problem and the final, why does it make sense in general? And I'd like you to leave you with these questions. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can, uh, I'll be right here. Thanks.